Welcome to The Meetings Podcast, the meeting organizer's podcast source for what's new in the meetings and events industry. Meetings Podcast is a conversation with a variety of voices that looks at events, meetings, and media. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. Welcome back to the Meetings Podcast. This is Mike McAllen with uh, Grashack Events Media, and this is the IMEX Podcast. And today we have Miguel Neves. Uh, Miguel is the Senior Online Community Manager for IMEX, uh, and we are gearing up for the October 15th to 17th Las Vegas event. Hi, Miguel. Hi, Mike. How's it going? Uh, it's going very well. It's nice to speak to you again. Thank you. Nice to speak to you. <laughs> And why don't you give the people who don't know who you are uh, a little background on who you are? Wow. Okay. Uh, my name is Miguel. Uh, I've been in the industry for about seven years now. I come from the music industry. I used to play music and produce music and all sorts of things in my home country of Portugal. And about seven years ago, I moved to uh, England, to the UK, and uh, did a university degree, a uh, master's in event management. Uh, I joined MPI as a student, and I've uh, really taken a lot, you know, used it to advance my career as much as possible and meet fantastic, make fantastic friends all over the world and really get to know the meetings industry that I really feel a part of now. Uh, I worked uh, for an American company called Synaxis Meetings and Events for three years. And since 2011, uh, two years ago, um, I joined the IMAX team that do the IMAX in Frankfurt show and also the IMAX America show. And I'm now based in the south of England, uh, in Hove, and the, the team of about 50 people here work on both the shows, and uh, that's that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. And it's been kind of neat for me, because I've known you since you were a student, actually. I remember seeing you getting some, standing up and talking about something, you know, when you were still a student. Um, and then I, I had the pleasure of seeing you at the last MPIWC Standing on stage as I walked into the room, I was late going into the, some, one of the sessions and you were up on stage giving a talk in front of everyone. Well, accepting an award. I'm sorry, you weren't giving a talk, but you were, you were speaking. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was quite daunting. It was 3,000 people there and uh, I had uh, three minutes to uh, give an acceptance speech. So yeah, You did a great uh, job. You did well, thank you. very comfortable and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if he's going to be up there later on as a, um, you know, one of the... Uh, as your 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 career skyrockets, that you're going to be one of the people up on stage all the time. But uh, so, what do you do? You never do you, know. What do you do for um, what do you do for IMAX? Well, I was hired uh, mostly to do a thing called the Future Leaders Forum, which is a uh, forum we do 15 forums a year in conjunction with MPI and MCI. And I, I attended this when I was a student, and it was one of the reasons I kind of got motivated and involved in the industry. So that was my primary role. And because I'm in touch with technology and social media, I was also then asked to manage uh, the, the IMEX social media um, strategy and also advise on technology in terms of education and um, exhibitors, things like that. And now I'm moving away from the Future Leaders Forum. We've actually hired somebody else to kind of take that over, and I'm focusing specifically on the social media strategy and you know my new job title uh, senior online uh, community manager is really also a kind of uh, call to arms from myself saying you know social media is great but it's not about technology it's about the community it's about talking to people online so I'm really trying to encourage the whole company to think about online and social media and and building that greater community that hopefully will then actually come to both our shows, IMAX America and IMAX in Frankfurt. And uh, yeah, that's that's really what I'm what I'm empowered with. I also do some of the technology, so we have quite a lot of technology education coming up. So I, you know, select uh, the speakers and advise. You know, sometimes uh, some of the sessions might be overlapping or things like that. So there's a lot of kind of curation work that goes on behind the scenes with that. Hmm. Very interesting. And, you know, more and more in my day-to-day -day work with my production company, um, it's getting away from traditional uh, 
ways of doing business. And it's funny how it is so important to social media and, and, and it's still kind of an afterthought, but people are starting to understand how important it is to build the community to get away yep. from, I mean, billboards and nobody looks at a billboard anymore. Nobody, you know, actually really clicks on a banner ad or every, exactly. everyone's just staring at their mobile phone. And it's, it's a hard sell sometimes because, uh, you know, kind of tracking all that and having hard evidence that social media is helping, you know, sales is a real, you know, it's really hard to do. Yeah. Um, you know, it, 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 sometimes it just comes down to asking people, you know, what convinced you to come to an event or something like that. Then you can get a, a direct kind of measurement. But other than that, you know, like when I'm deciding to go to a conference or to, to, to ask for funding to go to an event, I might go to the website six or seven times. I might see something on social media that, you know, convinces me a little bit. I might see a video on YouTube. I might speak to someone offline. You know, there's there's a thousand different ways that I might get introduced to an event and convinced that it's a good idea to go there. So attributing that to social media, I think, is very tricky. But on the other hand, it's, you know, it's more and more prevalent that it's it helps, you know, and it, it adds to that community sense and, and to proving that something is good for yeah. For knowledge gain, I guess, and networking, things like yeah, that. I agree. And it was also like, you know, people spend a lot of money on a billboard and they say how and their their metrics are how many cars are going by, but do you ever look <laughs> do you ever look at a billboard really? I mean I never do. So Yeah, it's a bit like are you in a traffic jam and does that make you look at the billboard more and <laughs> does that make the billboard more expensive? Uh, you know, it's <laughs> That's, you're right. You're really right. It's like if you if you have a slow internet connection, does that mean that the banner <laughs> ads should be more valuable? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell me about what's new this year at at, at IMAX. Well, um, social media is constantly developing, so we're doing a lot of you know small things there, but mainly this idea that. We're, we're reaching out to the community rather than coming up with a sales or marketing plan and focusing on social media. Uh, but that really manifests itself in different ways. I think the one of the most important ones is what we call IMAX Live. So IMAX Live is something we tried out the first time in Frankfurt uh, in May. And it is essentially a page where we aggregate um, all sorts of um, social media content. Uh, we mainly focus on Twitter as a channel that, that people use at the show to uh, share quick messages and also share photos and ideas. Uh, we feel it's the most mobile and I guess the most applicable social media channel for a trade show. Just because if you're, if you're on your phone, if you're running around having meetings, networking, maybe going to an educational session – to go on to Facebook or write a big blog or go on to LinkedIn is, is quite cumbersome, but a, a quick tweet, I think, is, is, uh, is much more valid and much more uh, likely to happen. And also it enables us to do things like IMAX Live where we can show these tweets coming through and we also have some screens, some Twitter screens spread out through the show floor where we'll, we'll show selected tweets and things like that. So IMAX Live is this aggregator of social media content. Again, going back to that idea of the community, it's not only about what we're, what we're producing. It's more about what people at the show are saying. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also going to have some video content, and it will also pick up on pictures, on photos of people at the show. Um, but very importantly, we have a little video corner set up where we're going to do very quick interviews, uh, mainly with speakers, but also with people that are attending the show and, and getting their impressions. And then this all goes online on this page, IMAX Live. And the idea of this page is to show people that can't be at the show for whatever reason. You know, they might have an event going on. They might be stuck at the office. They might not think it's worthwhile. And we just want to convince them that actually they should have been there. And hopefully they will come the following year. So the whole idea behind the, 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 the page is not to be a hybrid conference. Uh, I think that's something that we made a very uh, conscious decision. Uh, we don't, we're not a conference. Uh, we're a trade show. So we wanted to somehow summarize what it feels like to be at IMAX on a page, at IMAX America on one page. And that's what IMAX Live is trying to do. And we had... It was pretty successful in Frankfurt. It was the first time we tried it, so we were very anxious to see how it would work. And I think the the online audience uh, that the community around IMAX America it shares one you know mainly English speaking, which is not necessarily the case in IMAX Frankfurt. 
And I think that the the, the U.S. and uh, the Canadian-based uh, meeting community, meeting professional community, is more active on social media than the European one. So we're hoping to see even more engagement, and we're hoping to see IMAX Live really excite people and, and give people that that feeling for what it's like to be at an IMAX show. That's amazing. It's a great idea. Plus, you get all that information. I mean, it's a place where you guys can look at it and go, okay, what's working, what isn't, kind of a thing too. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we're 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 we're, uh, we're experimenting with some pretty cool functionality, and and hopefully it'll be something that people can use right away. You know, they'll open up the page and just kind of recognize the type of interfaces that we're looking at, and then you know, seeing content come up from all sorts of different sources, and not necessarily the official you know IMAX source. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's more exciting for people. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, well, it's real authentic then too. I mean, exactly. obviously, you're going to be pulling out the. The, because yeah, I you mean, always have that that worry that someone's going to be putting up a picture of their butt or something. Exactly. I mean, we have to have those those safety procedures. The idea, the concept, is to have it very much free and open it, and and have lots of different content in there. But we have had situations in the past where inappropriate content's been, you know, either using the hashtag or somebody sent messages or anything like that. So we have to have those things in place. Just uh, just the rules of the game, I guess. Right, 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 right. And so, tell me a little bit about the tech hub that's coming up. So the tech hub is really uh, we've we've realized that technology uh, education uh, education around technology social media those kind of things is really hot right now and people are looking for that kind of content so we've actually designed a whole new educational space a theater style setting uh, dedicated to technology and it'll feature I think six sessions a day and five on the last day so uh, that's what. 17 sessions overall uh, over the three days of the show. They're all half an hour sessions, so they're timed exactly uh, to be in between appointments. So the the business appointments are also half an hour, so we've designed the education to just fit in. So if, if, uh, if a hosted buyer is walking around, has a, a half an hour slot, they can walk over to the tech hub and uh, and hear, uh, well, you know, they can plan their day to, to include some education and, and hear some uh, thoughts about new technology coming up, how to use social media, how to decide on a mobile app, uh, how to use, you know, how to select audiovisual, um, all sorts of, all sorts of technology um, education is, is going on there. Very cool. And, and you had that last year, correct? No, we didn't actually. Well, there this was a, is totally new. Small, there was a small campfire uh, for 10 people that was uh, dedicated to technology. But so we've we've kind of upgraded that to a 40-person to a uh, oh, theater great. style. I, you know, I was going to say that because last year I remember seeing a ton of people around that that area. Exactly. So, you know, it, it, it's really because of that. You know, we love the campfire style. But we feel that with technology sessions, you know, it, 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 it's good to reach a, a larger mass of people. And, you know, if people want to stick around afterwards and ask, you know, private questions, then we've also scheduled always half an hour in between each session so the speaker can stay behind, answer any questions that are, you know, going on uh, past the, the, the allotted time. But we ask for the actual education delivery to be that half an hour. Awesome. Well, I look forward to it. Now, how can um, someone get a hold of you, Miguel, if they had questions about uh, the Tech Hub or any of the social media with IMEX? How, how can they get a hold of you? Well, just go on our website. Our, our contacts are listed there. Or you can contact me through Twitter. I'm IMEX Miguel altogether on Twitter. Um, also, I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different ways to contact me. Awesome. Um, or by email, if you want. Uh, that's also listed on the website, but I can leave it here. Uh, it's miguel.nevis, which is N-E-V-E-S, at imexexhibitions.com. All right. Great, Miguel. Thank you so much. It's always nice to talk to you, and I look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas. Thanks, Mike. Look forward to seeing you too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye now. We appreciate and thank you for listening to the Meetings Podcast. Please email with any questions or comments to meetingspodcast at gmail.com. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. The Meetings Podcast theme music is brought to you by the Delgado Brothers, which can be found at delgadobrothers.com.